Now, this week we saw Reserve Bank Governor um, Philip Lowe face all sorts of uh, grilling from uh, MPs, two days in Parliament. Uh, how do you judge his performance? I thought he handled himself pretty well, given the... Yeah, look, Rita, I reckon um, that Philip Lowe, you know, and I know that he's an easy target here because he did make that really bad call mm. about interest rates, but... You know, let's also remember, this is a very political uh, thing that's going on right now. Labor is absolutely using Philip Lowe as a punching bag to compensate for their own economic mismanagement. Yes. Now, Jim Chalmers here has a huge narrative problem, and it goes on so many different levels. Number <laughs> one, well, you know... Number one, the fact is he's going to have to go and start dumping money into all sorts of cost of living, uh, uh, you know, arrangements. And what's that going to do? That's going to pour more fire on the fl uh, flames of the fire of inflation. The same thing with wages and the IR bill, you know, mm -hmm. and all of that. Again, that's going to push up inflation. Now, the point Philip Lowe made, and I talked to several economists this week who all said the same thing. Yes, it is absolutely terrible that interest rates are doing what they are. And a lot of people are going to be doing it tough. But here's where the politics of this gets really Really, really interesting, guys. If you look at the RBA analysis of who is most exposed, it is people who are quite well off, upper middle class, who have a couple of investment properties, have two, three million dollars worth of loans. Now, where do these people largely live? Teal seats. And as this starts to bite, <laughs> this is going to be a huge political problem for the government, which is also looking at taking away these same seats stage three tax cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating. But he did make that terrible comment, which to me was incredible because he's made it yeah. at a time where we were just pouring this public money in, hmm. which was obviously infla inflationary. I mean, I learned that in Economics 101. And yet he thought it wasn't going to cause inflation. But Labor don't have a leg to stand on here either because at that time they wanted that largest to be even bigger. They wanted more. Uh, they wanted well, more and more public money pumped in they during were calling Josh Frydenberg. Drinks. They were calling Josh Frydenberg stingy yes. for not <laughs> dumping enough money in. I mean, and they were and they were remember when they were upset when Josh Frydenberg said, hey guys, guess what? We made a miscalculation. We're fifty billion dollars better off than we thought we were. They're like, well why haven't Spend you it. dumped that fifty billion dollars into the economy too? So these guys have no that, moral high ground here. No, they to job keeper extended yeah. uh, they, the inflation rate right now if they got their way would be frightening at the behest of of the premiers most of whom were labor premiers the government were paying people to do nothing well that's going to cause inflation and i agree with you philip lowe should not have made that comment about interest rates staying low until 2024 but as he gave evidence in the senate committee hearing he was being advised by health authorities who were basically running the country that tens of thousands of people would die that we'd have have makeshift morgues in the city just down the road from the RBA. So he was going on the advice that everyone else was taking and uh, and making decisions based on that. I feel like he's been hung out to dry by well, this Well, he government. has a bit, but, I mean, you know, the other thing, too, that everybody, you know, needs to unfortunately get around is that, you know, the much bigger killer is going to be inflation because inflation hits everybody. Not yes. everybody is leveraged. Not everybody is mortgaged. You know, rents are only partially tied to interest rates. They're much more a function of supply and demand in that market. It is when inflation starts to bite. And I tell you something, I talk to people in the United States every day about what it costs to fill a grocery basket now. And we do not want that because the people who are going to get whacked by that, they are not people sitting in, you know, Bondi Chelsea. with a couple yeah. of investment apartments. Yeah. No, they are people sitting in all the suburbs uh, of this nation who are really going to do it very tough. And the government is complaining about interest rate rises, which are the only tool the RBA has to deal with inflation, while the government themselves continue to implement inflation-causing policies, yeah. such yep. as their climate energy policies, which just cause prices to go up. And I can tell you there's uh, some fairly emboldened unions pushing up uh, all sorts of yeah. costs at building sites and elsewhere. So I think this inflation issue is not going away anytime soon.